Hey everyone, my name is Robert and I'm here bringing you my very first ever YouTube video under my brand, Bobachino. I currently have a B rank driver rating on GT7 and I'm working to turn that into an S rank. Cur eventually, I will take my online sim racing experience to my local racetracks here in Canada to see how well I can do using my Deborah X and I hope you're willing to be part of that journey. This week's Daily Race A has us at Suzuka Circuit's East Course for 10 laps. A fairly quick course with a long straight and lots of narrow turns that are hard to pass. The advantage to Daily Race A events are that they don't impact your driver's safety rating. So if you haven't raced in a while, it is a pretty good warm up to get back into the swing of things. Currently, the fastest vehicle at this event is the 2002 Dodge GTS, and unfortunately, I just couldn't get my GTS to be detuned where the power would be within the allowed maximum because, funny enough, I bought all the performance parts for it. If I had just bought the bolt-on parts, I definitely would have been able to use it. So I decided to use the next best thing, the 2003 BMW M3. It probably needs a few more parts and a bit of tuning, but overall, I think it did fairly well. The only issue I had was trying to keep the power down without the car coming completely sideways on me in the turns. But that is more like a, a tuning issue. And yeah, no one wants to give each other space. But, you know, maybe everyone's just warming up today. And we've somehow gotten to fifth. And as we progress, you'll see you really don't need to brake all that much. All you need to do is just kind of coast through the turns. But this guy, Ali Lazian, Ali Liaz, they really don't like to share share the road all that much. But they are fairly aggressive. So I decided, you know what, I think it's better I just follow them for a while, see how it goes, see if there's any mistakes, and try to be as consistent as possible. Surprisingly, the Alfa Romeo uh, did pass the, the Dodge, so maybe the Dodge isn't fully upgraded. Yeah, hitting the brakes a little too much. And I just tapped them. And they, uh, Ali Liaz clearly over pushing it when really they just had to let off the gas and roll on through and oh not getting any space again so I yeah I just back off here decide you know what yeah there you go that's what I thought they were gonna just cut across so I figured you know what just be patient and maybe if we could work together a little bit we can maybe catch up to the guys in front because we do have about six laps left. Fortunately, I think when I bump drafted him, he went a little too fast and wasn't prepared for the fact that he would be moving quicker. So he's still close. Actually, it looks like he may have messed up because the uh, gap opened up a little bit by half a second now. I still haven't reached my fastest lap time yet that I got in qualifying. But I think at this point, Tom Merck ahead of me by seven seconds roughly. There's just no way I'm going to catch up, so at this point in time I'm just going to speed up the video here because I'm pretty much in what I like to call no man's land. The guys in front of me are too far ahead for me to catch up. The guys behind me, I've created a decent enough buffer where they can't catch up unless I make a really big mistake. So while we're here, what other types of automotive and motorsports content do you enjoy watching? Like car reviews, going to car meets, upgrading cars other racing simulators. I'm really curious. I mostly only play GT7. I played a little bit of Formula 1. I like going to the racetrack. I like going to car meets. So I'm thinking about making those kind of videos as well. And do you guys think there is a limit to how many videos a YouTuber 
or, or your content creator should make in a day? Uh, let me know down in the comments. I'm really curious. Yeah, I'm just barely keeping this uh, BMW under control. Put your wheels on the curb. This thing is not a happy camper. Yeah, look at that gap in front of me. Those guys are just working together. And I think they were also A rank drivers. I can't remember. But they're quick. I'm trying to push this car by the same time. I, I think I need to really tune it. Yeah, the gap behind me is really, uh, really grown at this point in time to just over two seconds, two and a half seconds now. I was considering cutting this content out and just going to the very end, but see how I do. I'm not a huge fan of how sometimes YouTubers cut it and then you just, you lose track of if it was the same video or not. So yeah, but uh, I guess I slowed down a little bit or the guys behind me started working together because they really picked up their pace. That's it for race one. I got a second race for you guys. I'm starting at sixth in this race. Look how nice that car looks. Better launch than the first one. Kind of surprised that that Honda S2000 is struggling a little bit there. Oh, here's Ali Lies again. Back at it. Everyone wants to go two by two here. I think that's that's. A Pretty bad idea, because someone's just going to push you off wide. Well, that's what makes this track so tough. Oh, look at that. No space, and I think he ends up going... Yep, I think he ends up going to the Shadow Realm. No space. Clearly there, he should see me there. If he had his radar on, and yeah, he's gone. Surprisingly, I end up passing the Dodge, which should be killing it on the straights. Well, this is a pretty quick car, the M3. I imagine people probably don't like it too much because it's a little much to handle, to be honest with you. Look at that. See? Almost lost it. But keeping it together. The RX-7, D-Love is having trouble getting any power to the floor, but he did get a faster qualifying time than me, so I'm kind of surprised why he's struggling so much. I just decided, you know what, it's better just to work with him, don't fight him at this point in time. You know, second place is right there.
think the RX-7 D-Love is starting to fold under pressure. Yeah, he overpushed it. Now it's, now it's the chase. It's me chasing second place. But it's going to be tough because those Dodgers are fast. Good, good buffer behind me so I can more or less focus on the attack but still try to keep this BMW under control. I think I have a decent line here. I think this is going to be the same situation we had in the last race. The Dodge just gets ahead of me, and the guys behind me can't catch up to me. I wonder if I tweak the LSD. I know I didn't put a full racing clutch on because I didn't have the money at the time. So maybe the next race I do in daily race A will be better once I buy the extra stuff and do some minor tweaks. Yep, North Summer 007, who's driving that Dodge, has clearly got away on me on this. And the only thing I could hope right now is that he makes a mistake, because he just keeps opening the gap up. by the video here because clearly I haven't caught up for a while. But while we're here, how many YouTube, I don't know if I asked you this question yet, how many videos would you like to see YouTube creators make in a day? You know, I was thinking about it, I was thinking, well, what if I created five YouTube videos a day? Would that be too much? Too little? Well, I don't think it'd be too little. But if you're a regular YouTube creator, was creating one video a day over the last 10 years, which is funny enough when I wanted to start 10 years ago. Um, if I made five videos a day, every day for the next five years, I would have just as many videos as they would have at the end of their 15 year career. Assuming they were posting one video a day. But something I re noticed recently was a lot of the big YouTubers, at least the ones I follow in the auto industry or motorsports, they used to post once a day, but they really dropped the number of videos they're making to one, maybe two videos a week, which I think is one of the main reasons I was spurred to uh, start creating my own content.
But if you like this video, please like and smash that subscribe button. 